It's the house of hope. The people of God have got to turn this thing. How are we going to turn it? How? The way we're going to turn it is getting back on our faces. If we get on our knees and begin to cry out to God. And it's not going to happen just in the church. But you got to have revival in your house. Not revival. Not the church has done all over the years. But we need revival in the area of prayer. to hear 
hear the knock at the door. She was the one who heard the knock at the door. Watch this. And when Rhoda went in to tell them that God had released the answer, the people who were deep and spiritual and wonderful said we're supposed to be in a prayer meeting. They said, surely it must be his ghost. They didn't even believe for what they were praying for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. I'm not hollering back at me. Yeah. Uh, apparently, because when God showed up with the answer, he showed up in an unusual way. Yeah. And they weren't ready for the answer when it came the way it came. Yeah. And so they said, you, you got to be mistaken, brother. It can't. And she insisted, no, it's him. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yes, sir. Watch this. So you got to be prepared. For the answer when it shows up. And then when the answer gets there. Watch this. You've got to now respond accordingly. Because it would not have been enough. For Peter to be at the door. And then to have gotten an answer at the door. And they never go to the door and open it. Did y'all hear what I said? Many of us God has released answers. But we've not gone to the door. And opened the door. To receive the answer. That God was trying to release in our lives. On a very personal level. Right now we're praying for our nation. But while you're praying for the nation. You've been praying for things about you and your family as well. And you've been been praying for you. Oh God help me Jesus. Okay everything just got shifted this morning. I'm not preaching my regular message. I'll come back to total renovation next week. But I got to tell you. That we got to posture ourselves. To hear the answer from the Lord. And then we've got to move. Hallelujah. It's right here. We got to move in a place and in a way that we are now. We, we catch what God is trying to do in our lives. Yeah. We've not done that, saints. Yeah. We've been praying and praying. Yeah. We've been religious. Uh-huh. Yes, that's right. we've, done, we've done our duty. Uh-huh. But what do you do when God releases the answer? What do you do when God releases the answer? Here's the problem. We've been praying and praying, but we've not been listening. I'm talking to somebody here. We've been praying and praying, but we've not been listening. And at some point, we got to shift our focus, not just to the prayer pattern, but to listening. As I was talking online this week I said what we need is a strategy I said when we get done I said y'all go ahead and have your revivals call whoever in you want to preach do whatever you're going to do but at the end of the day there are some conversations that need to be had there needs to be an understanding that needs to be developed and it's not going to come just by us having church I need to talk that church. It's not going to come just by us having church. Now, let me talk clearly. And I didn't plan to preach about our nation today, and that's not really where I want to go. But listen, if our nation is going to get total renovation, the body of believers has to be on our faces before God. I'm going to speak apostolically now. Let me, let me just do this. I'm just going to go with, go with this in, in its flow. See, because what has to happen is the body of believers has to begin to pray. And we've got to begin to pray. Can, can I walk through this? Can, can I walk through this day? Oh, okay, listen. What has happened is even in our church intercessory teams, we've prayed for our churches, we've prayed for our pastors, we've prayed for other people in the body of Christ, but proportionately, we have not prayed as the Bible has commanded us for our government. I can't hear nobody. We've not prayed for our city officials, we've not prayed for our nation in the capacity that we should have. Proportionately, that is not what we have done. We spent more time on frivolous stuff. We spent time on our needs. 
God, give us the money. Give us the house. Give us the car. Give us this. Give us that. That has been our prayer. Even the intercessory teams of the church have been praying about that. And we've forgotten to pray for our nation. And the only time we tend to pray for our nation is when something happens. And then we are so driven to pray for our nation. But unfortunately, we're just like the news. When the story changes, we change. Y'all gonna help me preach it here today? When the narrative changes, when the story changes, yeah. then we move on to something else and we forget the other stuff we were praying about. Yeah. It was just what, maybe a year or two years ago when we were, everybody was up in arms about Trayvon Martin? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, everything died down. Yeah. Then everybody was up in arms about Jordan Davis? Yeah. And everything died down. Yeah. Everybody was up in arms about Sandra Bland? Then everything died down. Yeah. So what we have become is we have become, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to go deep in this today. What we have become is we have become reactionary. Yeah. I'm glad this is going on social media. The, the world needs to hear this one. Yeah. We have become reactionary saints. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now I said earlier, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and what? Heal their land. Uh -huh. That's the text, right? Yeah. Okay, but look at this. If we have not been praying consistently as believers, yeah, yeah. and on our faces as believers, uh -huh. we have not heard God speak to us about any of the things that were coming. Oh yeah. We've not been listening to God about the things that were coming. So we didn't have a voice to pray against the things that were coming because we weren't sensitive to the voice of God. Are y'all talking to me in here? Let's be honest. We have not been sensitive to the voice of God. God, the Holy Spirit, knows what is past, present, and future. And he knows how to deal with us and show us what is to come. And if our hearts are sensitive to the voice of the Lord, we will be able to hear even of the things that are coming. And by hearing of the things that are coming, it will cause us to go into prayer concerning strategies of how to handle the things that are to come. It should not be that the saints are on the back end looking for an answer. It should not be that the saints are on the back end playing catch up on what is the answer. We should be on the front end praying and we should have the answer ahead of us so we can speak the word of the Lord and declare it in the atmosphere. That's what we got to be. But we've not been in prayer. We've not been seeking the face of God. Can I tell you I'm going to share with y'all a vision, okay? Yeah. And then you'll catch what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I guess this is my delivery of the vision I've been promising for the past two days on social media. Uh -huh. all right. That's all. I need y'all to listen very intently yeah. to this vision. Mm -hmm. On the 7th, I was on the phone with a friend of mine from Texas. We were talking. And while we were talking... I got up from up front and I went in the back and I, was, and I laid on my bed and we were continuing our conversation and I turned over to send it to whisper, I just whispered a prayer for the nation. Yeah. I just whispered, just like, Lord, please touch our nation right now, we need you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I did not go into that moment expecting to go into a time of intercession. Mm. All I was going to do was to say, Lord, please touch our nation. But as I was in that moment, something came over me and the spirit of prayer came on me and I began to pray fervently on my bed. But while I was praying, now understand, y'all know, I walk in the office of a prophet. I'm a seer. But it's been a long time since God has taken me all the way into an open vision. Now let me help you understand what open vision is. That's when everything else around you becomes dark. Kind of like you're in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. 
and it just opens up and it's like it's playing on a screen before you or it's as if you're in the middle of it living it literally while I was laying in my bed my whole room was dark and I could see the scenes that God was showing me as I began to pray initially what number one he took me to this show or this movie where there was this casino now pay close attention there was a casino and there were people in this casino and this group of other, this other group of people like four or five people came into the casino and they were looking around and people had been in this casino people who were in the casino had been there for years and years and years and never left the casino listen it wasn't because the casino was the doors were locked it was because they had become enamored by the games. Not only were they enamored by the games, but stay with me. Whoever the owner was of the casino, there was some kind of psychotropic drug or opiatic drug that was being piped through the air into the casino. And so the people were disillusioned. They were still functional, still doing everything that they were going to do. They were still functional, uh -huh. playing their games. Yeah. But because of the drug that was being piped into the casino through the ventilation system, yeah. they didn't want to leave. They didn't even have a mind to want to leave where they were. They were voluntarily imprisoned. So now, after I saw this part of the vision, then he took me to the movie The Wiz. Do y'all remember the place in the movie The Wiz where Dorothy and the lion, they ran into the opium plants? And they were throwing the little dust on them. And they took them inside the opium factory. And by the time we see them coming out, they're rolled down this pipe. And they're rolled out and they're in a catatonic state. Catatonic meaning they were laid out and they were un they were basically unconscious, not functioning. Yes. But what was interesting and what the Holy Ghost pointed out to me was that there was a pink smoke coming out of the pipe. Yes. Which symbolized, and of course you anybody that knows anything about opiates, many times those are smoked. Well, it was a smoke that was in the pipe coming out. It was a pink smoke. Stay with me. And, it, and here's just a little side note that's going to help you. It wasn't until Dorothy and the lion's friends began to cry over them that they came out of their catatonic state. Some of y'all missed that. It's not until we begin to cry over our brothers and our sisters that they're going to begin to come out of their catatonic state. But in that instant, I saw the smoke, and the Lord really brought attention to the pink smoke. Yeah. Because then, I was taken into the church. It was a sanctuary. I don't know what sanctuary I was in, but I was in a sanctuary. And I looked around. Lord, help me to articulate this effectively. The entire room of the sanctuary was filled with the same pink smoke Woo! that I had seen at the factory. This is the part that scared me yeah. or concerned me. Because when, if you were in the smoke, it didn't look like smoke. Uh -huh. It looked clear. Yeah. With the exception that it had a slight pink tint to it. Uh -huh. And coming from this smoke, it was literally like the same drug that was dealing with the people in the casino. Had their minds all messed up. Watch this. Remember I told you the folk in the casino mm -hmm. didn't want to leave. Yeah. Come on. And they were still playing their games. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Keep in mind now I'm in the church. All right, all right. Come on now. Come on. In my vision, I'm in the church. Yeah. And we're still doing. Everybody 
that was standing up. Uh -huh. Listen to me now. Yeah, yeah. Everybody that was standing up were in the pink smoke. Mm -hmm. And I saw them doing what looked like church. Uh -huh. Stand with me in the Holy Ghost, y'all, please. Yes, yes, Lord. I'm talking about they were dancing, uh -huh. they were shouting, uh -huh. they were, I'm talking about they were falling out on the floor. Yes. They were doing all this stuff in the pink smoke. Uh -huh. It was a cloud of smoke. Uh -huh. But here, they were calling this cloud that they were in, the move of God. They were calling, Sister Anna, the cloud that they were in, that <clears throat> cloud, because they were so undiscerning. They were calling the cloud the move of God. They were saying the glory cloud just showed up in our church. But it wasn't. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? So what was happening was they had this cloud. And they were not told they would go. If you didn't know any better, it was so close to what the move of God looks like, you would have not been able to distinguish that this was not the glory cloud. That's how serious it was. It was that tight. It was that close. It looked that much like the things of God. But it wasn't God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And so, in the vision, I was, I said, God, then the Lord took me back to the last two or three years on social media. When I was on social media in the last two or three years, there's been an outbreak of people posting praise break videos. Y'all know what praise break is, right? When folks are shouting and dancing. There's, there's a rash of people posting praise break videos. And I began to ask God, I said, God, I need you to help me understand. I mean, this was two or three years ago when it first broke out. I was saying, God, why is this rash of praise break videos hitting the, the, the social media waves? This doesn't make sense to me. For three years, God has not answered me until this week. In this vision, God gave me the answer. Because my question was, God, why are they not posting the word that led up to this praise break? That's what I was curious about. Because obviously there was something that pushed them to the break. But what was it that got them there? That's what I want to know. And rarely was there a word that was shared that led up to the break. All you see is this fancy footwork. And everybody so they the moment a shout breaks out, that's when folks start getting their phones out. Can, can I walk a little further? I'm, I know this is going over social media, but I'm, I'm going to do it, and I don't care. They can call me later. I was in a service. Oh, I'm not scared. Come on, come on. Uh-uh, I can't walk in fear. I was in a service where Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole was preaching and singing. And she was trying to take the people into a worship before she preached. But so many people had their cell phones out recording her singing because she was a celebrity that they missed a worship moment. Now, I don't, we don't have a problem here in, in, in Kingdom Life if you've got your social media out and you're texting or you're not texting, but if you're tweeting or you're Facebooking the points from the message or things that God is saying in the service, we don't have a problem with that. But when it hinders you being able to worship God, we got a problem. So in that instant, and I'm not trying to attack anybody, I'm not trying to belittle anybody, but I realized something. That drug, that spiritual drug that's in the pink cloud has got us addicted to entertainment. Y'all should have hollered right there. It has us addicted to, now, 
I can, I can prove it to you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to get back to the vision. Post a video of somebody teaching the word of God. Line upon line, precept upon precept. They're teaching it. Sharing it. Folk will not spend 15 minutes to watch what's going on. But now, on the flip side, let it be somebody. And they let see what they do now is they, they post the part of the video right when the person's getting ready to build up to their who. They post just before the who. And then they post the who. And folk get excited because they hear whatever it took to build them to the who, and they get excited over the who. Uh -huh. Spirit of entertainment. Yes. If you really want to change in your life, yes. you wouldn't be running for a who. Yes. You'd be looking for where the teaching is that will teach you that will help you to change. Yes. Can I, can I walk a little deeper? Some of y'all weren't there with me at Trinity, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Jeremiah chapter 8. In Jeremiah chapter 8, he said, you are putting band-aids on broken bones. My nurse is in the room. Does that make sense? Why would you put a band-aid on broken bones? And that's what our preachers have been doing in the body of Christ. Just so we can keep you coming back to us and coming to get a little placebo to make you think you're getting better when you're really not getting any better. So as you start to see, watch this. Oh, When you understand what is what really, when a person breaks their arm, what they have to do is go back in and reset the arm so the arm will grow back properly. We don't have leaders in the body of Christ for the most part who are, are willing to go in and apply some pain to reset the limb that's been broken. We let you keep growing broken. And because you, we don't, you don't want us to judge. You don't want us to deal with stuff. Nobody wants to be rebuilt anymore. We can't help bring you back into alignment. You'd rather grow broken. The people would rather continue to be left alone and grow broken. Here's the problem. If you're growing broken, you lose some of the functionality of the limb that has been broken, even if it quote unquote is healed. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Don't reset that arm. Watch this. You'll have stuff sticking out in places it ain't supposed to be sticking out. Broken. People don't want to be rebuked anymore. They don't want correction anymore. They don't want order. Just keep feeding me a pill. That numbs my condition. Keep giving me something that numbs my condition. Keep telling me no matter what you're going through, God's going to bring you through. Well, when we finally come to grips with the fact that some of the stuff we're going through is our own fault, and we need somebody to tell us it's our fault. When we find, when we get somebody to tell us it's your fault, <laughs> we don't want to hear that. But that's the thing that's going to bring real healing and change to our lives. Preaching here today, Kingdom. I feel it in here. We don't want real change, so that's why we can put these entertainment videos up and these praise break videos. And the Lord showed me in the vision because people just want to be entertained, but they don't want to sit for thirty minutes and hear a real word. Can I walk deeper? And we got all of our favorite preachers that we turn that we tune into. We make celebrities out of our favorite preachers. And I don't have a problem with God raising men and women of God up. Don't get me wrong. But what I got a problem is when we make stars out of folk who are designed to be servants. God ain't hard to me up in here. We have made stars out of people who are supposed to be positioned to be servants in the house of God. My job is not to be a star. My job is not to be a celebrity. 
put you in a first class hotel. Bishop, at this point, I don't care. They can come for me if they want to. <laughs> if I'm gonna be a prophet, I gotta be a prophet for real. <laughs> they gotta put you in a first class hotel. They gotta give you all these major accommodations. You gotta ride her like a celebrity. You can't be picked up in this kind of car. If I'm coming to your city, you gotta pick me up in a limousine. Or it better at least be a Mercedes or a BMW. Yeah. Well. Baby, what, what about when they were riding on donkeys and had to walk? Okay, I'm gonna hit this and I gotta get off of this, but. Now, I, I agree that there are some churches that take advantage of preachers that don't bless us properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't prepare for us as gifts to the body of Christ. I agree that that is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Pastors and leaders, don't bring somebody in that you're not prepared to be a blessing to. Uh, yeah. Okay, but now here's my other problem. There are big folk who have no mind to go to little churches because they think they're too big for that. You can't preach for 20 anymore. Because you're too good. And the only reason why you'll walk out in the crowd and lay hands is so you can get a big offering at the end. So when you call your thousand dollar line, you'll have a line going out the door because you know you're going to walk away with 50% of that offering. But that is what has happened. Why? Because we have made stars out of people who were supposed to be servants. I'm going to say right now, boldly, flat footed, I'm going to say to every preacher out there, you were never called to be a star. Pink cloud looked like a very, very dark pink. Yeah. 
like a dark, hot, pink kind of color. But from the inside, it just looked like you were in a clear environment, but it just had, had a pink tint. But now, listen, listen, listen. But I noticed something very specific. And that was that this pink cloud stopped about this high off the floor. Everywhere in the sanctuary, it stopped about this high off the floor. And the rest, everything up under that was clear space. And the Lord began to say to me this. I, now mind you, keep in mind, I'm in prayer and intercession on my bed right. when I'm seeing this. Yeah. The Lord said to me, the reason why you are able to see the pink cloud and identify the pink cloud is because you're on your face. Because if you were standing up, which represents pride, you'd have been in the cloud. But in order for you to not be in the cloud, you had to be on your face. When, it's, when the cloud is coming to this high off the ground, you can't be, I can't even be like this. Are y'all catch what I'm trying to say? I can't even be like this when the cloud, I'm on my knees. I can't even be on my knees when the cloud is coming down to about this high. I had to be on my around in the spirit and I saw others and it was as if God took me to other sanctuaries I was still laying where I was but I was in other sanctuaries I'm going to take those off I was in I was in a sanctuary I was in the same sanctuary where I had been but I could see other people in others I could see other sanctuaries and I saw other people who were on their face like me who weren't in the cloud but the number was very few. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. The number was very few of the people who were beneath the cloud and on their face. God said, the only way you're going to stay out of the cloud is if you stay on your face. Are y'all hearing me today? Yeah. Yeah. This is serious. This is serious, thanks of God. The only way you won't be deceived by the seducing spirit that is the pink cloud uh -huh. is that you've been on your face. Amen. But now, let me go back to the witches. I'm almost done with this, with this vision. This is what messed me up. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Here's what messed me up. When the witches said the stage is set, let us go in and do our work. Listen. They walked into the church. While everybody was still shouting and dancing and doing their stuff. Stay there. They walked in. And they got right next to the church folk. Yes, sir. Come on, man. They walked in and they sat down next to the church phone, the ones who were in the pink cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They walked in and they were standing amidst the folk who were in the pink cloud. Uh -huh. And because the people were in the pink cloud and they were disillusioned and they had no discerning, they could not tell that it was witches sitting next to them. And while they were speaking in tongues, the witches were chanting. While they were, he called up the usher. The witches were peeping and muttering and calling on spirits. And they, they were none the wiser. Watch this. As these witches were peeping and muttering and doing their chants, what happened next? They were little. It looked like they didn't have a form, but they kind of did have a form. But they were little, like blobs of light. About this tall. 
They were just tall enough to function up under a pink cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Pay close attention to what I'm about to say. What happened was these little blobs of light would move very quickly and they were running to two places in the sanctuary. They were running to the pulpit and to the altar. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Did you hear what I said? Yeah. They were running to where? Pulpit I said, and what they would do is when they would run to the pulpit, like I said, they were all they were without form, but they kind of had a form, if you will. And they would run up to the altar, to the pulpit, and they would grab something uh -huh. and run out the door very quickly. And I'm talking, they were just, and I'm watching them go in and out. And they're taking stuff. And I can't physically see what they're taking off the altar. I can't physically see what they're taking from the pulpit. And I said, look, before I can even get it out of my mouth, as I was talking to the Lord in the vision, before I can even get it out of my mouth, he said, what you are seeing is they are taking the treasures of the kingdom. Listen. The witches came in yeah. among the people because the stage had been set. Yeah. Everybody was drugged up. Everybody was still shouting and dancing. Yeah. Everybody was still falling in the floor. Everybody was still doing the church. So remember I talked about Rhoda and, and the people that were in there praying. And I'm not speaking the same thing. But I'm just talking about how you can just see that we're still doing churchy things. Yeah. 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 That's the book right there. Having the form of godliness. Yeah. But denying the power thereof in the pink cloud yes, sir. while we all up in the pink cloud having church yes, yes, yes. not really being see the proof of whether you're in the cloud or you're in the glory cloud is where the change is beginning to happen in your life for real that's the proof are you changing for real Or do you have to come back every week to get another fix because you messed up again? Same stuff you've been falling in for 20 years. Yeah, come on now. Hey, preach it. Oh, you better say it, Big L. Don't do that. <laughs> she almost slipped into something. Don't do that. <laughs> but we, we're in a place, saints. We're not being changed. In the pink cloud, nobody's being changed. Yeah, mm. that's right. Good. In the pink cloud, we still hold on to the way mom and them used to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, let me go deeper. In the pink cloud, we call ourselves getting a new revelation of things and walking in the fresh wind of God and the fresh move of God in the pink cloud. But if the truth be told, we're not walking in real power. Because here's reality. Yeah. When you're in the real cloud, uh -huh. the real cloud of God, yeah. lives are changed, yeah. communities are transformed, yeah. things begin to happen on a whole nother level. Yes. Okay. Let me finish this out. So when God said to me, they're taking the treasures of the kingdom, I said, well, Lord, what is it? And he took me back in my vision, he took me back to earlier this year in real life. I was trying to put together a service called Preach Hard in the Pain. And what it was designed to be was a platform for young adults who were coming up in ministry to give them an opportunity to exercise their gift. What I was gonna do was put together a two day service where these youth and young adults who had a ministry, who had a word on the inside of them, give them about 15 to 20 minutes apiece to preach the word of God. And I was gonna, there were gonna be young men and women who were qualified and released by their pastors to share a word. You know what was so disturbing? I couldn't even put the, and I asked, I said, God, I feel like this has been in my heart. Why, why can't I do it? Mm -hmm. Now I understand why I couldn't do it, because I needed to see this vision. What was the vision? One of the treasures, listen, that were being taken 
the treasure that was being taken from the altar was the next generation. They were stealing our youth and our young adults and taking them out the door. Did you hear what I said? They were coming in, grabbing them up, people weren't putting up a fight. But let me tell you why they weren't. Treasure number two that was being stolen. Listen very closely. Treasure number two of the kingdom that was being stolen because the witches were at work and they were chanting and praying to their demons and their demons were coming in. Going to the altar, going to the pulpit. Treasure number two. They were taking Listen to these exact words, and you may want to write them down. And they were taking away the purity of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were taking from the pulpit the purity of the knowledge. I, I, I want to hone in on that word. The purity of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I know? It's rare anybody's preaching about that blood anymore. That's right. Mm. 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 Unless by chance it happens to be one of our Baptist brothers and sisters who believe that you can't end the mess without going to the cross. Uh -huh. It is rare, rare to hear about the cross anymore. Yes. It is rare to hear about the blood anymore. In our churches, we're talking about God. But rarely do we even mention the name of Jesus. Make some folk mad right here too. We have lost the fear of God in the church. Yes, Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Because pastors and leaders and ministers yes. and worship leaders yes. and musicians yes. and ushers have not been on their face yes. Yes. been caught up in the pink cloud. Yes, sir. Haven't been praying. Yes. Or oh, let me say it like this. Been praying, but ineffectively. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yes. Mm. Mm. So what has happened is the purity, the purity of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ was now being snatched from the pulpit. Oh so it caused preachers yes. to have ill motives. Y'all yeah. not talking to me up come in on, here. Come on, come on. It caused the preachers to be lusting after money. It caused the preachers to lust after power. Maybe two. You're not putting a demand on them to 
you get in the Bible and start learning something. But you're excited because you started, your trust went from 100 to 3. Yes, yes, that's right there. That's it. That's good. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Preach. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
protected the purity of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me say this. I said the Lord, not the Savior. I can't get nobody to holler back at me right there. I said the Lord, not the Savior. I made him savior because yes. I didn't want to go to hell. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. 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 I made him, I embraced him as savior because I didn't want to die and go to hell. Because yes. yes. they told me hell was hot, Brianna. Yes. 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 Everybody wants to embrace him as savior. That's why we preach this gospel. Jesus loves you. Y'all know what I say about it. He loves you just the way you are. But he loves you too much to let you stay that way. We jumping on folk about how they dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said this before and I'll say it again. I'm going to say it publicly. I'm going to tell you. We jumping on folk because the, the girls come in with their cleavage down to here, the dress is tight and so on and so forth. Uh -huh. Do you know whether they have something else to put on for you to judge them and talk about them? Yeah. And let me rebuke these church folk for real. You talking about them and they tight dress. Did you go in your pocket and take them to the store and buy them a new dress? Why is it quiet in here? Why? 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 You didn't take them to the store and help them find something nice to put on that wasn't so tight or revealing. Uh -uh. But let me help you right here. If they make him savior, if we teach the purity of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, God has a way of working his way in to the various areas of our lives. So before long, he'll start, she'll start making him lower. Yes, that's fine. Come on now. Preach on like you feel. I'm going to here right now. Oh, we'll start making, see what'll happen is she'll start making him lower. Yes, that's right. That's right. In different areas of her life. He'll become lower to where she ain't got to have a boyfriend to take care of her needs. She's saying, I'd rather struggle, I'd rather suffer than have to go back to what I used to be. Because she made Jesus Lord of that area of her life. I was in the church of her. If he can start becoming Lord in that area, next thing you know, he'll become Lord in her closet. Some money. Yeah. 
Particularly revivals. We call it revival because we know if we get a good guest speaker in, he gonna ask the folk for a hundred dollars, and the folk gonna stand in the line, especially if the preacher knows how to entertain them well enough. They gonna jump in line to give a hundred dollar seed. So by the time it's over, you raise five thousand dollars in the offering. The preacher goes home with half of it, and now your church got twenty five hundred sitting in the bank. And you think? Our younger generation doesn't realize that your motives are dirty. We're hypocritical. And you think our younger generation doesn't see our hypocrisy? We accept who we want to accept. If they walk up in here in full drag, mm. come on, come on, come on. Good, man. That's how you got to go talk at church. If a man walks up here in full drag, by the time it's over, folk done talk about him like a low down dog. And that's only because you can see what they're in. Yes. 
scout, they see it. And they're not putting up a fight because the realness of the knowledge of the purity of the Lord Jesus Christ has not been guarded by the people of God. This was my vision. I saw the treasure of the kingdom being taken out. And we're just letting it happen. I preached this today. God shifted my whole message. The weeping that's taking place should be happening all across this sanctuary now. Because there should be a conviction that hits all of us. God, forgive me for what I've been. Forgive me for my own hypocrisy that has helped to take away or allow the, the spirits to come in and take away the purity of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to get back to the place where there's power in the church for real. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Preach it. I feel an anointing in here. Mm. My little boy, I'm shy. Get us out of the cloud. Yes. That's what our cry ought to be. Get us out of the pink cloud. Yes. Yes. Everybody's not going to stand. If y'all post it on Facebook and say, I want to be out of the pink cloud, they're not going to stand it unless they. And then you might want to tell them to watch this video so they'll understand it. Now, now we share T.D. Jake's videos, and I'm not against that. We share Paul the White, we share all the other folks. Today they need to hear this one. Today we need to click share on this one. Because real change needs to happen now. If we were to make Jesus Lord again in our lives, in our churches, in our families, I hear God. I am rebuking the men that have not been leaders in your house. And I'm not talking about when you stand up and say, I'm the man. Yeah, come on, come on. If your wife doesn't hear you openly praying out loud, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on. Lord, have mercy. Men, you are supposed to be the leaders of your house. Your wife should hear you praying in your house. She should be able to trust your level in the anointing that you are a part of the house. Not because you got thighs and muscles and biceps. Not because you got a gun in the drawer. But because you got a prayer life and you know how to deal with demonic forces. Your children need to hear you pray, men. Yes, 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 They need to hear you pray. Yes. Prayer has to be a regular part of your life, men.
Because yeah. men, you ain't been on your guard. You haven't been on your post. I stand as a prophet of God today, and I'm calling men back to prayer. I'm calling men back to a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Get rid of your side piece. Yeah. 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 Woo. Come on now. Yes, Lord. Y'all pray for me. We pray for us. Yes, sir. I said get rid of your side piece. Even if you're not married, get rid of your side. Oh, Jesus, help me. Because she's not helping you get into a relationship with God. She's helping to keep you in your flesh. And don't think it's not women up in it. Got another side piece of shoe. Get back, please. If you have a husband, support your husband. Yes, that's right. Yes. Am I preaching truth, Mom? You preaching truth and good. I'm telling you. Ladies, get back in place. Praying for the man about what he did to you in the past. And half the time, it's not even what he did, it's what some other children did that you're still carrying in the relationship that you're in right now. You're not praying for him. You're not covering him. But you should be. The family needs to line up again. The children need to learn how to pray. Yes, they do. Amen. They need to see mama and daddy when they get into heated discussions, when they get done with whatever heated discussion, they grab hands and they need to see you say, in the name of Jesus, we will not be divided. We are going to come together. We may not agree on this, but we are going to stand together in the name of the Lord. This family will not be destroyed. The children need to see it. They need to hear it. Half the time you're the one that needs to be dealt with. Because what has happened is everybody is oh, shut up. Some of y'all have swept so many issues up under the rug. You're walking around on lumpy carpets. You try to act like you got it all together. Act like you're the one of them. But the truth is, y'all don't really like each other. But when you get in front of folk, you play the role. Chronicles 7 and 14. Yes, yes. If my people. Yes. My 
I'ma call by my name. Yes, sir. I'ma bore themselves. Interesting word. Because remember, everybody who was in the cloud was standing up. Yeah. Humbling. The picture of humbling. Can I give you all the picture of humbling? Yeah. Uh -huh. Have you ever seen a dog when he comes before his master? Yeah. Especially when they're really humbling. Yeah. A dog will get all the way down on all four fours and they'll crawl up on their belly before their master. Yeah. They're saying, you in control. Uh, amen. Yes, sir. I submit. I may have the teeth to bite you, but you're still the master. Yeah. Yeah. My God. If my people, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Yes, sir. 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 Pray. If we're gonna see this nation changed, yeah. right. gotta be, there's gotta be a revival of prayer, not just in the church, but in our homes. Yeah. Right. Right. So that God comes and remember what I said. I need to bring this back home again. And you gotta not always be talking in prayer. Yeah. Say and then hush. Uh -huh. Go into prayer from now on with your pen and your notepad, mm. yeah. especially in your dedicated time to God. Go with your pen and your notepad and go expecting him to speak. Yes. It'll start with little whispers on your heart, little disobedience. Yeah. Some of y'all say, I've never heard God speak to me before. But go in and stretch out my whole sister. Some of you need to start going in with your pen and your paper. Because yeah. when you go in with your pen and paper, you're saying, God, I expect you to speak. And I expect that my ears are going to be open to hear what you're trying to say to me. I'm going in with my pen and my paper because I'm ready to write down what you're saying. Yes. 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 Go in with your pen and paper. Yes. And then write down the things that he says. Yes. Then when he releases you to go to your next thing that you're going to pray about, yes. go to the next thing. Uh -huh. And then listen. Write down what he says. And if he doesn't speak, there are times he's not going to say a thing. Mm -hmm. But you've got to be sensitive and learn how to navigate in the realms of prayer so that you know when to speak yeah. and when to be quiet. Can I teach y'all something real quick? You've got to be in a place where you say, Holy Spirit, before you go into prayer, Holy Spirit, guide my prayer today. Show me what to pray. Show me how to pray today. Because watch this. I'm going to give you a Bible to back up what I'm saying. It says that the Spirit of God knoweth the things of God. He knows the heart of the Father. So when you ask Him to help you pray, He will cause you to pray whatever is on the mind and the heart of the Father. That's good, isn't it? Yes. When you say, Holy Spirit, help me pray today. Yes. Show me how to pray. Show me what to pray for today. Yes. Yes. And sometimes you'll go and you want me to pray about one thing, and you say, no, don't pray that. Mm -hmm. You won't pray, God, get him. Yeah. You ever want to pray one of the prayers? God, get them. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost will have you start praying. Find a healer in life. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Come on, Bring deliverance to their life, Lord. Touch them. Yes. Even though you don't want God, you want God to get them. Yes. But the Holy Ghost knows that what caused them to be the way they were was stuff that's broken in their life. So now he needs you to be the one who prays and be an agent of change for their life. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I shout out my God. That's what God wants to do. Yes, yes, Holy Spirit, show me sure. how to pray. Yes. Show me what to say. Yes. And sometimes he's not going to say, okay, this is what you're going to do. You're just going to start opening your mouth. And it's going to start coming out. Yes. Like I told you, when this prayer happened on the 7th, I didn't go in there with the intent of interceding like that. I literally went with the intent of just saying, Lord, touch our nation. But it turned into a time of intercession. Yes. My 
people which are called by my name, that means us, humble, like the dog, ourselves, pray, seek my what? Y'all want his hand. You want his hand. When my kids were young, I would go out to eat. And I used to love y'all, I love sweets, so pray for me. I do better now. I do a lot better now. Let me tell you, I do better. But my kid, when I would come home, I would always, I, I would never eat all my lunch. So I would always bring it home. When I came in the door, that one right there, uh -huh. <laughs> he'd be the first one. Hit my hand. Now, JK has always been the one. He'd come and wrap around my leg first. When he get done wrapping around my leg, at that time when he was, when he was little, he would wrap around my leg. Daddy. But it wasn't long. But he was looking at me, what you got, Daddy? <laughs> What's in the bag, Daddy? What's in your hand? He was looking forward to what was in my hand. But watch this. The reason why I had no problem with handing him and his sister what was in the bag mm -hmm. was because before they ever reached for the bag, yes. they wrapped around my leg. Yeah. Yeah. They would kiss my face. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all catching the revelation what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They wanted to hug daddy yeah. first. Yeah. Then they would ask what's in the bag. Yeah. When you have a heart yes. that says, Daddy, I want your face, I want your will, yes, sir. first, yes. he has no problem giving you what's in the bag. So the scripture said, seek my face. Seek my face. Seeking means you got to turn over some stuff. Yes. You got to move some stuff out of your way. Yes. You got to cut off some stuff. Yes. And then it says turn from your wicked ways. Yes. We always think about the major stuff, but what about the stuff we don't think about? Yeah. Wicked ways. The stuff that we were told to do that we didn't do. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking now. Yeah. Yeah. The stuff God told us to do that we didn't do. Yeah. Get up and pray at 3 o'clock in the morning for the next week. Huh? I'm sleepy, God. That's wicked because God wants to use you to bring change through prayer. Yes, yes. Turn from your wicked ways. We're talking about people like a dog. Wicked ways. But I'm not talking about it. I'm just telling the truth. Wicked ways. My Bible says love covers. I love to a sin. I'll deal with you personally about what I see, but I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna attack you, and I'm not gonna let anybody else attack you. Yes. Why are you getting yourself together? Yes. Turn from my wicked ways. Yes. Then he's gonna hear us from heaven. He'll forgive our sins, yes. and our land will be healed. Are you in agreement with me today? Yes. Yes. Somebody put those hands together and give them.